with a Monday night meltdown. We'll tell you exactly why Buffalo shuffled off with a win that might have grounded the Jets for good. Meanwhile, does the D and Big D stand for done? Wait till you hear what's about to happen to the Cowboys. Spoiler alert, it's not good. Plus, Sirianni says sorry. You'll hear how the most important voice in Philadelphia sports responded as we get up with you starting right yeah. now. Yeah. Let's go. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> there will be no joy, yeah. no clapping, there will be no happiness. Yeah. No, I decree it. <laughs> there shall be none of that. Game? Because it was it was not a good game. It was a close one right down to the wire. I'm what more do you want? By the way, I'm inviting the officiating crew to my house for Thanksgiving. I saw them so much <laughs> last night. Oh, on both here sides. we go. I feel like we're all good friends. Were now. you and Aaron texting about the rest? Wow. Is that was that the happen? No, no. He told me to lose his number. <laughs> Roll the highlight. Here we go. Jets and Bills on a Monday night in a very windy night in New Jersey. The Jets new brain trust there. Todd Downing and Jeff Ulbricht pick it up two minutes to go. Jets down 7-3. Third and goal. How about this play? Neat. Oh, a little time machine Aaron Rodgers. Buy some time with your legs, flip your hips, and deliver a perfect time to back in the end zone. Great body control, Garrett Wilson. They originally call Wilson out of bounds. They review it. They look it over. Oh, they get the touchdown 10-7. Oh, hey. He's got that dance. Meanwhile, second and 10 bills deep in their own territory. Jeff, how does he do this? Look at this. <laughs> Getting himself. I, how many times have we seen it this season? Running to his right, throwing back to his left, and drops a dime. Unbelievable. Alien throw. <laughs> like, like, it really no is. human can make that throw. Uh, the Manning cat. As Peyton was yelling, throw it away. Instead, it leads to this touchdown. Mac Hollins is fired up. Bills extra point, no good. They're up 13-10. Then, Neek, how does he do this? Another alien play. Being a Bills fan must be so damn fun. Just watching Josh <laughs> Allen. The play breaks down, and that's when you get excited. Another athletic play. Bills 20-10. to Then that leads to this. Here we go at the end of the half. Graziano, you said these Hail Marys. He, he used yeah. to practice them. When he was Brett Favre's backup. Because this is a drill for the defense. So they put the backup quarterback in to make the throw. So Aaron says he worked at these, and now he's done it, what, four times in real games? Four Hail Marys in yeah. his career. No other player yeah. has more than Lazard didn't have anything to do with that. That was just a great throw all the way around. Yeah. There we go. Good, good call, Gross. <laughs> I'm just telling you what Aaron said. Yeah. When Ross, has he ever lied to us? Ross, of course, is such an Aaron Rodgers fan. Yeah. The Jets go into the half down three. Then Braylon Allen, touchdown. But wait, mm -mm. it's called back. Jeff, is this a good holding call on Tyron yes. Smith? Yes. It, it, it actually it is a good call. Oh, 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 oh. Is call. Honestly, you can't listen. When the guy rips, you have to let him go. Yeah. It just it's unfortunate. Not everybody, not Aaron's not the only one who's getting a little older on the uh, on the Jets. Two plays yeah. later, Greg Zerline, we're not showing. To you because he made it. Oh, don't <laughs> he did his best to knock over the goalpost last it, night. You said early it was windy. It, it was, was windy. windy. Uh, windy. Uh, and it was certainly windy. Here uh, it comes again. Try it again. Yep. See if he can knock him down. Look how hard. Oh, oh. oh. That's a Rock. terrible sound. <laughs> Jets failed to take the lead. Bills no, get the ball no, back. No. <laughs> I thought it was my fault. Thanks Second again. and seven. It's Allen. It's Dalton Kincaid, and they are matriculated. Yeah, quick decision by Allen right there. He makes an easy pass to convert. That was a nice play. It wasn't even magical. Two plays later, second and seven. That's that Keon Coleman. Nasty. That was what you call ripping it. That over leads there. to a field goal, so it's 23 20 Buffalo for the third consecutive week. Aaron Rodgers has the ball at the end of the game with a chance to win. Mm. And for the third consecutive week, wah, they don't. Wah, wah, Mike, wah. Williams, Mike Williams manages to get hurt on that play because, of course, he does. Falls down, it's intercepted. Oh, I'm just saying. Oh, if things couldn't possibly get worse, I don't know how they do. Bills win a thriller 23 20. Everyone involved with the Jets looks kind of the way Aaron did there. Mr. Rogers, let's talk. This was a golden opportunity. Some games you win in the NFL, and some games you give away. This was a giveaway. I mean, we were terrible in the red zone, missed two field goals, um, didn't convert on a you know two minute drive. We had plenty of chances. Should have been a 30 plus point game on offense, and this shouldn't even be a conversation. So, obviously, we got time to talk about this. If you're interested, put your feet up. We're not going anywhere for a little <laughs> while. I'll, I'll give you my big picture, you know, my 35,000 foot thoughts, and then we'll just dive into it. I, it's an ironic statement about a team called the Jets. Um, they do all the things that winning teams don't do. 
Like, they don't get blown out of these games. It's, it's hard to sit here and yell and scream. But they've lost three consecutive games by a combined total of 10 points. They just do all the little things that winning teams don't do. They drop a pass. They have a miscommunication. They miss a field goal. The quarterback, unfortunately, late in these games, whether it is miscommunication or whether it is coming off the injury or whether it is that he's just getting older, he just doesn't seem to have or at least has not had the magic that we had seen from him in his career. The Jets, the, the, the teams that... What I'm trying to say is that the Jets aren't a terrible team. They're just okay. one of the average teams in the NFL. And those teams, the ball bounces the wrong way on you sometimes. It has bounced the wrong way on them three consecutive times now. And unfortunately, it may pro it probably has buried them at this point. People are going to talk a lot about the easy schedule they have coming up. We'll see. That feels like a long way off right now. They put absolutely everything into this game. You fire the coach. That's right. You're basically laying, you're saying, okay, this is the one where it's all going to turn around. And then you still have the same penalties, the same mistakes, the same issues. You keep losing for all the same reasons you've been losing. I don't know exactly where you go from there. I'll um, put a little bit of a happy uh, spin on this for you. They had eight explosive plays That's of right. their 59 plays last night. That's 13%. That's highest of any team in all of football this year. <laughs> The fact that they then got into the red zone and couldn't convert on touchdowns, that's another issue. But there's something positive to build on, something to be encouraged by. The fact that Aaron Rodgers gets the ball, like, that's the thing that's discouraging to me, I think, uh, for the Jets, is the whole premise behind bringing Aaron Rodgers is, guess what? We're down with one score and one minute left in the game. We got Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers with the ball in each of those weeks have ended in a way that Looks similar to if Zach was still back there. This is the problem with trying to, to put it all together on the fly, right? Like, you can't import culture. Like, we, the, look at the Buffalo Bills, right? They built it from scratch. They, they got the quarterback. They built the team around him. They have an identity. They know who they are. And, and, and they learned how to win together. They went through the tough time together. The Jets haven't done that, right? You have a quarterback that just came in. You have, you know, all these guys they added in the offseason that, that are playing together for the first time. They just fired the coach. Like, I don't know where, how you can sort of have, you know, organization-wide trust. Like, as, what are you going to fall back on when things don't go well? The Jets have not established that for themselves, and I think that, that makes the difference in these close. I'm going to have to humbly disagree. You can import culture because Tampa did, and they, they imported culture, and it, and it won with Tom Brady. And that was what the Jets fans were expecting when they brought Aaron Rodgers in. Because you remember when Tom got there with mm -hmm. B.A., mm -hmm. there was some issue. They had some battles early. It wasn't like they just started that gate just ripping and roaring. The issue is they fired their head coach five weeks into the season because they panicked right. as opposed to letting this thing play out and continue to develop. Stable so, organization in Tampa that knows what it's doing, right? Like, that's that's the difference. Yeah, right? now, I, I agree right. with that. I, but I think that was the expectation of Jets fans was that it was going to be a Tom Brady, Peyton Manning-like, you know, entrance into this team, and it has not shown that way. And to your point, when you say, oh, our defense is going to be good enough, all, I mean, how many times do people say, as long as the defense is just average, Aaron Rodgers, we're going to win a bunch of games. I, I'm sure I said it. I'm sure I, there's a lot of people who said, hey, as long as the defense is just average, well, giving up 23 points is pretty decent, right? Did, did they shut the Bills down? They didn't. Are they all world? No. But when you give the Hall of Fame quarterback three different opportunities, three different weeks in a row to go win and close it out, and he does it, and everything's about the referees. Was it not windy for Josh Allen? Because I, I, maybe the wind stopped. I'm not sure. But was were the same? They had 11 penalties as well. They had a lot of the same stuff going on. They found a way to win, and the Jets don't find a way to win. Allen's throws are impervious to win. That's right. He goes right through the win. It was he does not care. But, but look, I mean, like, first of all, the Tom Brady stuff, like, for, forever and ever and ever, if everybody's expecting literally anyone else to be Tom Brady, they're always going to be disappointed. For sure. He is the outlier of all outliers in NFL history. So let, let's look at what the Jets are. You're supposed to have an elite championship caliber defense. Well, a rookie backup running back just went for 150 yards on you on Monday yeah. Night Football. What are you doing? Right. right. Like, I mean, they could not stop Ray Davis in the first half. And, and salute to Ray Davis. Great game. But, like, you know, you've got to be able to do that. They, the Bills are, are banged up. They were outmanned. Yeah. Like, they, you should win that game at home. And, and, and the Jets didn't do it because they just, they just don't, they don't have what the Bills have, which is cohesion and identity. I mean, you can't. If your identity is, hey, we have Aaron Rodgers now, that's right. not really anything that's to build right. on. Agreed. Uh, when you haven't made the playoffs in 14 years, you'll try and find anything you can. That's why I said last week these problems 
existed long before Aaron Rodgers got there, and they're going to continue long after he's gone. That's exactly what I'm saying, though. The Bills went 17 years without making the playoffs. Right. Right? The team got and then sold. then what happened? To, they, the team got sold. Oh. And they, <laughs> and they hired a coach in Sean McDermott and a GM in Brandon Bean who had a plan for what they wanted to do, and they were patient with it, and they, and they built it together. We're seeing it happen in Detroit. Right. They, the, there are places where you see this done well. What the Jets are trying to do was always a high wire act, and I don't think it I was. I mean, I guess it was always a bit more risky to try to import all of this culture, like you're saying, but we can't sit up here and pretend like we thought it was a bad idea. No. Like now it looks ridiculous, but we no. all seem to think it was a good idea. We thought it might time. not work. Yeah, we thought it might not work, but I, I think we believed it'd be better than it is now. The thing about the defense that we keep talking about, and they, they are a good defense, but they aren't the great defense that I think we thought they were. Because it's, it's different when you, set up Joe, when you set up Zach Wilson to win and he doesn't win. And then we can all look at the defense and say, well, you did everything you could do. But the defense needs to do a little bit more also. I, I understand that 23 points is not a lot or is, is a, a good outing for the defense. But there were several times in that game where I was like, all right, you're this Jets defense. Right. Get a damn stop right now. And no, when they the needed those stops, they, they weren't they getting them. You know what we can say of the Jets defense? They're not nearly as good as they think they are. And that's the truth. The Jets right. defense is merely good. It's not great. Right. It's good. They didn't start good, but they finished well. Listen, right. they gave up three Jets. points in the second half. You, if you that's are, great. if you are the Jets offense. You cannot – there is ebbs and flows in the NFL. They didn't start great. I totally – I agree. He ran for a buck – I think it was 100 yards in the first half. So, yeah. he's running through them. But at some point, you hold the team down to three points. By the way, in the last, like, six minutes of the game, they get the three points. So, they held them. They gave the Jets offense every opportunity. But, again, missed field goals. Penalties, bad decisions. Uh, there's a there's a there, there's a litany of excuses to be made, but the reality is they don't they get in their own ways. And to to put this at the foot of the defense, again, this is like putting at the feet of Salah. It's just it's pointing blame in the wrong places. At the end of the day, and here's this is it's gonna be the worst part. They're gonna make the playoffs. <laughs> they're gonna make the playoffs. They're gonna get they're gonna get somewhere close. Everybody in the AFC is gonna be 500, right? There's gonna be a couple outliers, but there's not a lot of teams running away with it. Even the, this Bills team isn't a great team, y'all. God love them. They're playing better than I think they should. But this is not a the Jets should not get run away from because they're gonna win a few, lose a few. It's gonna be kind of an ugly. But that's the problem. The expectations were Super Bowl or bust. They ain't they ain't a Super Bowl team. Here's what I'll say of the Bills. This is the worst the Bills are going to be for a long time. I, I, That's the other. Is. You're catching them. When you have a quarterback like Josh Allen, you're going to have this, then a little of this, got to reset the captain, this, then a little bit. They're in the little bit of this phase. Yeah. Right. right. This is when they had to get rid of all those players on defense. And right. uh, Stefan Diggs left, and for whatever reason, he left. This is the worst Buffalo is going to be for the foreseeable future. They'll get really, really good again. There's a whole other conversation to be had about that where they had that window there and they didn't get the, the bills, right. I mean, that's and right. they didn't win a championship. And, and they're going to be way better than this. That's the point. It was sitting right there for the Jets with Rodgers. And, Cindy, I mean, let's put A42 up on the screen if we can here because this is th – this. look, I can present it almost without comment. Last year, the Jets, through six games, had a better record. They had scored exactly the same number of points. You see the turnover differential? Oh, who's the other team? Maybe? Oh, Tennessee is the game that they won. Right, right. Not a great team. So, so – if it sounded at the beginning like I was making excuses, that's the opposite of what I want to do. This wasn't about the officiating, even though I thought the officiating, it didn't decide the game. It just made it no fun to watch Amen. at all from Correct. both sides. Amen. They just decided last night, we're going to call everything a penalty because right. obviously that's what people watching Monday Night Football want. <laughs> um, but, so they just made the game less fun, but they didn't it's decide true. the game. The win didn't decide the game for one side any more than the other, or it shouldn't have. Right. The Jets lost the game because they do all the things losing teams do. That's right. And that is what, when you bring the great quarterback in, that, Dan, is the thing you think is going to get cleaned up. Yes. The attention to detail, all that stuff. That's that right. Peyton Manning brought with him to Denver and that Tom Brady brought with him to Tampa and that to this point Aaron Rodgers has not brought with him to the Jets. Tom Brady got to Tampa. He broke NFL rules and possibly local laws by gathering during a uh, pandemic to, to get on the same page with his receiver. On a high school field. Aaron Rodgers went to Egypt during mandatory minicamp. Yeah, I mean, Who among us I'm has done. not done that? <laughs> yeah, that, that, I think that does do it. I think it's unfair to pretend like that's the only issue. Of but course. I think that does exemplify a personality that 
permeates the team. And so when you're uh, in a leadership position and that's head coach and quarterback, no one else has as much influence on the culture as that guy. And right. if for whatever reason it doesn't seem as important to him as – other players feel like it should be. When you do have issues with timing and issues with penalties, it's going to look like, hey, maybe you should have practiced a little bit in more. Drops. Or maybe, yeah, in yeah. drops. Or maybe you should have had paid more attention to the things that are small and you think don't matter. That's something that maybe he doesn't need, but he needs to set that example for the L team. Let's play Troy Aikman because this is the thing that if, if you are a fan of the Jets, this is the thing that you were most worried about is that Troy Aikman is right when he's when he forecasts this for the near future I could see this totally unraveling maybe that won't happen I know the players won't agree with that but I could see it happening because I think they put so much into this week to win in a game and getting back on track and the owner says this is the best team he's had in 25 years all those things but they didn't get it done and so they're right back where they were and uh, the, now they now what's the answer for them they don't have it I, I fear he's right the Jets need to go into a dark room <laughs> and self-reflection. <laughs> they need to find it. Find their inner whatever. Did you mean <laughs> that purposely because of Aaron <laughs> and his dark rooms? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But let's find something because it needs self-reflection because th these are player issues, not just coaching issues. This was my problem with the whole Robert Sala firing. And whether you like it or, or, or dislike it, whatever it looks – these are player issues. The drops are player issues. The penalties are player issues. The, the missed field goals are player issues. These aren't just laid at the feet of a, of, of a coach. And so, at some point, responsibility and accountability has got to go to the 53 in that locker room. And so far, we have not seen that. How do you respond is the big question. And I think they, we've pointed out that they're in a conference that no one's running away with it, and they still have a good chance of making the playoffs. So this may serve to be, you would think that they don't need a wake-up call because they've already had multiple wake-up calls up until this point. And firing Robert Sala, I think, was the final, like, everyone, pay attention. Your jobs are all on the line. Our chance, our window is closing. And then that's why you say you hear Troy say what he said because that felt like that felt like the game where everyone was supposed to show up and, and be a new version of themselves. That's right. I, I, to be very clear that I'm not trying to make a, a legitimate analogy here, but once you have tried the nuclear option and it didn't work, where do you go from there? Yeah. You've, you've already made the yeah. biggest move you can possibly make.